Thank you, Hina. The pandemic of the unvaccinated continues. Today, 156,296 new cases and 1,233 people who have died in the last 24 hours. Hospitalization in America is higher than it was last August. What's going on? Are we ever going to fight? Are we ever going to win this fight with the pandemic? With us is an expert, Dr. Rachel Ropper. Welcome to Muslim Network TV. Thank you. Dr. Ropper is a professor of microbiology and immunology at East Carolina University. So do you agree that it is really a pandemic of the unvaccinated? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the people that are vaccinated, if they do catch it, they have usually you know, no problem with the infection. It's just like a cold. But the people who are unvaccinated can be hospitalized and die. And those are the people that are filling up our hospitals now. As you said, there's more than 100,000 people hospitalized with COVID today in the US, even though we have a vaccine that works. So what, do the, what does the future look like? I mean, uh, President Biden uh, came because the mismanagement of President Trump was the issue, he said, and he's going to manage that. Is there anyone who can manage the pandemic? Well, I think, you know, you can you can give good information to the public, but if the public doesn't listen to it and get vaccinated, you can't protect them unless, you know, we have a mandate, which a lot of people don't want to have that kind of mandate. So, you know, the old saying, you can lead a, a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? We, we can give people information, but if they won't take the vaccine, they can't be protected from the vaccine. So you sound like you have given up on people really going for vaccine. <laughs> no, no, I never give up on people. We have to keep working to get good information out there. People need to know that COVID is real. It's very serious. It can kill you. And the vaccines are safe and effective. And, you know, there's a lot of fake information out there. And, these, you know, the poor public is getting this bad information. Um, so we need to make sure to do everything we can to get good information out to people. So, I mean, that is being tried. There are advertisements, there are celebrities. What else can be done? Yeah, we just have to keep trying. And I think, you know, a lot of people trust their, their own physicians. And so they, people should go to their physician and talk to their physician about it and get the real information. Because, you know, when they just hear things on, you know, on social media or, you know, YouTube, uh, they don't know what to believe. So if you talk to your doctor about it, um, that's a, a good source of good information. The, the other thing is, you know, we have the, the U.S. government, the Center for Disease Control, the National Institutes of Health, and those are large groups of scientists and physicians who care about taking care of Americans and their health. And then so you can trust them and listen to them. The other side is, you know, we have to realize that there are foreign countries who are spreading misinformation in order to hurt our citizens, in order to hurt our country and make themselves look better. So you kind of you have a choice. You can listen to the U.S. government, physicians and scientists, researchers, the experts, or you're probably getting foreign propaganda and fake news from somewhere else. What are the fake news from other countries which is coming to the United States? I thought we control the media and we have the Hollywood. Oh, no, no, not at all. Yeah, I think just last week, I think it was Facebook took down hundreds of Russian accounts that were shown to be spreading fake news about vaccines there. And there were there were hundreds, I think hundreds of thousands of U.S. followers who were following these fake Russian accounts. So we know this is happening and, and has been happening for a long time. Hmm. So, <clears throat> I mean, we had a war on drugs and there was a whole lot of money spent on it. Then, uh, you know, we have different wars, war on terrorism and all that. Do you think pandemic gonna be that type of a war which will just go on and on? I think that the virus is so widespread now 
that there's no way we can eradicate it from humans. I think it is endemic now. We will have COVID in the human population forever, but we will have vaccines that are effective um, like we do now. Um, and hopefully it will be, you know, like a cold or maybe, you know, like a, a flu. So it is endemic, it's here to stay. Um, I don't think there's any way we can population since 2003. So this is the third jump into humans. Um, and this is obviously the worst one. Um, the first SARS coronavirus came out in 2003. And we were able to control it with public health measures, just quarantine and, and isolation and masking. Um, this one is much more contagious and it's evolving to become even more contagious. Now we have the Delta variant that's six, seven times more contagious than the original. So um, yeah, this, this virus is gonna be here to stay and we're gonna have to manage it with vaccines um, and hopefully we can get it under control. So management is, seems to be the part of it that America want uh, all of us to get a booster shot. Um, do you think the boosters will be coming every six months? Because it seems to, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, 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 its system seems to weaken within a few months. Right, yeah. So some of the vaccines for, for the SARS coronavirus are completely new. The RNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna are completely new. And so we really didn't know how long they would last. Um, the Johnson & Johnson is a more tried and true platform vaccine, but of course they're all new because this is against a, a new pathogen. The, the SARS coronavirus 2 causes COVID-19. So, um, and immunity does wane over time. And the other thing, the weird thing about coronaviruses is, is that they're known to cause reinfections. And that's not typical with all viruses. A lot of viruses, you know, you get it once and, and you're gonna be protected for life. But coronaviruses, you know, we really don't understand why they can cause re repeated reinfections. So um, the good thing is that coronaviruses don't mutate and change their genomes as much as influenza does. Influenza is almost completely new every year, which is why we have to get a new shot every year. Coronaviruses don't mutate like that, but they do mutate slowly over time. And actually, you know, this one has just jumped into humans, so its mutation rate or the selection for it is moving more quickly. So I don't know, you know, if we can get everybody vaccinated and get the incidence down, then everybody will be protected and we won't need so much vaccination all the time. Right now, COVID is just on fire um, in the US and many places around the world. So you have to have a high level of protection or you're gonna get it because it's just everywhere. And so that's one of the reasons that, that we are boosting now. So why do you think uh, this virus keep getting stronger? I mean, you mentioned the Delta virus, which originated in India, uh, is um, seven times uh, more infectious. So is that a gain of function theory applies to it becoming stronger? So viruses have to do two things to survive in nature. They have to replicate themselves, reproduce, and they have to spread. So any virus that can do those two things better will, will come out and have a selective pressure. It'll beat out all the other viruses, <clears throat> excuse me, all the other viruses that aren't as good at replicating and spreading. So this is just normal evolution. Um, the viruses that are better at replicating and spreading will come out and take over, rapidly take over the other viruses. It's kind of, you know, from an evolutionary standpoint, it's very interesting because viruses are one of the few things that we can watch evolve in real time. And we're seeing that now with, the, with COVID. So the, what is the difference between a natural uh, mutation of viruses to become stronger and deadlier and the gain of function theory or science? So gain of function is what is a term phrase that we use when we have doing something in the laboratory and we like insert a gene so that something new can be done by that virus. Um, but that's really not, not what's happened with COVID or how it evolved. There's no evidence in the genome of any manipulation of the genome. I've, I've looked at both the SARS coronavirus 1 and, and SARS coronavirus 2, which causes COVID. The genome looks completely normal, um, but normal evolution occurs so that things slowly become better and better at replicating and spreading and whatever they need to do to survive in nature. 
and and that's what's happening with with coronavirus. You know, Mother Nature is much better at making viruses than any any uh, lab could do. Oh, so so China and America should stop blaming each other and blame Mother Nature here. Yes, I, I'm really sad and surprised that anyone wants to blame a country for a virus, right? So the virus could evolve in your backyard, right? It's not your fault, right? But um, of course, we want governments to be responsible and, and take good care of their citizens and warn people when there are problems. And um, yeah, I certainly would not blame any government or any location for, for having a pandemic. And, you know, the last pandemic, the, the H1N1 influenza pandemic started in North America on a pig farm. Nobody blamed us for that one. So I don't think it's fair to blame, blame the Chinese for the virus. And the Chinese scientists released the genome sequence January 11th. So they let the whole world know the genome sequence so everybody could start making vaccines against this virus. And the World Health Organization declared emergency, a world a global emergency at the end of January. So all the countries were warned at the end of January that this was a major concern. So tell us, Professor Roper, so I shouldn't throw out my stock of masks and everything? No, I would, I would definitely keep using masks. The, the virus is so widespread right now um, that, and so many people have it, definitely, I think everyone should be wearing masks everywhere in public. I'm, I'm sorry, I've gone back to wearing a mask in public in the grocery stores or wherever we are. The masks really help a lot, but it's really important for them to cover your nose and your mouth. Um, you know, a lot of people are wearing them down here. That's not going to give you very good protection. You need to cover your nose and your mouth and try to make sure that it fits kind of tightly on the sides if you can. Thank you so much, Professor Hopper. I'm glad to help. Back to you, Anna.